This meeting is being recorded. Thank you. Are we ready to go, Dr. C? Yes. Jeff Moody, you ready to go? We're waiting for the chair to take control of this meeting. Yeah, we thought the chair would, would, would get this going for us here. All right, I am gonna I'm gonna take control of it, but then I'm gonna let Jeff Moody run it because he's in the room, and I think that makes sense unless anyone else has anything. But as uh, we are good to go, it's six eleven. Is Deanne ready to go? Yeah. All right, six eleven. Uh, please rise and say the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'm the chair, Clem Madden. I am remote because I'm quarantining. Uh, we are opening our budget hearing at 611 and I'm gonna turn it over to our vice chair, Jeff Moody, who is in the building. Jeff, please take it away. All right, can everybody hear me? Okay, if you can mute. Yes, I can hear you. All right. So thank you all for uh, joining us for this meeting today. Really what we want to do is to review the proposed budget for DES for the upcoming school year. Uh, so we'll get right to business. Um, handouts have been provided to those in the room, and we will be screen sharing uh, the information that we'll be presenting here to everybody else. Um, yeah, so Clem, uh, I know that you uh, had wrote, written up a very thoughtful sort of preface to this budget. So um, would you like to give your brief comments before we hand it over to Jeff Trexler to go through what we've put together so far? Sure, thanks, Jeff. I do, I have, I, I typically introduce the Warren article number one, our main driver of budget before Jeff goes into uh, revenue. Emma, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? I'm here. I'm talking. Can yes, you hear me? Can hear you. Yeah. So to continue, I usually introduce Warren Article Number One for movement uh, to, to or at the district meeting, but I'm not there tonight. So Jeff Trexler kindly is going to do it. We do have an increase in our budget that's due to three main drivers, which are the uh, health benefits, the retirement benefits, and our tuition. Jeff, are you prepared to uh, take? my notes that then go with it ready to go clem all right thank you jeff okay all right, so let me just get the screen share up for you so that everybody can see it present Okay. Okay. Good evening, folks. Um, glad you're sticking with us through our technological challenges. Hopefully, we'll have things worked out um, as we approach our district meeting on uh, March 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th. Um, so, good evening. Uh, we, the board, and the SAU and the Dunbarton School District's administration produced this budget over the course of several months in numerous meetings. The budget process starts early in the fall with the administration looking at the school, its educational programs, staffing, and physical needs, and preparing a draft budget that includes proposals that the administration believes the district needs or would benefit from. The school board then begins the process reviewing the budget and proposals, asking questions, gathering information, and having a discussion with the administration about what the school needs. The result of that process is what we are presenting today. I'm going to review the budget using our summary sheet as a guide. That's our next page, Jeff. Uh, one after. There we go. This is a two-page summary. We'll be uh, starting with the first page. Um, we'll highlight um, the significant changes, both increases and decreases. Uh, this year, the process 
one overlying factor coloring all of our discussions, the current pandemic situation and how it is affecting our educational mission and the community at large. This required the board to balance the need for fiscal prudence with the need to maintain our established rigorous educational programs for next year, especially considering the lost ground our students have experienced over the past year. As such, we are not proposing any new programming or hiring any new positions at Dunbarton Elementary School, but we are intending maintaining what we have. Even without any changes to DES programming, our budget for next year is increasing due to three main drivers that are beyond the board's control. Number one is health insurance costs. Our guaranteed maximum rate given to us by our insurer, Health Trust, is up 12.8%. Uh, that's the maximum increase that we'll see. We're not sure what that rate will be next year, but they present to us a maximum rate increase so we can prepare a budget. And that is the amount that we've included in our budget. Hopefully it'll be less, but we don't know. The second item is the New Hampshire retirement system, employer contributions. Employer rates have increased from 17.8% to 21.02% of employee wages. That's an 18% increase in the uh, employer contributions. For our New Hampshire retirement system, the uh, employees contribute 7% of, of their wages, and the employer uh, rate makes up the difference. And that amount is set by the retirement system based on their anticipated liability uh, for upcoming retirees and their anticipated rate of growth in their funds. The 7% for the employees is set by statute, and so that remains unless the state legislature changes. So any increase in the required contributions must come from the employer rate. The third item is that we uh, is our main driver is tuition that we pay to the both school districts to educate our seventh through 12th grade students. And that tuition rate has been affected by both the same health insurance and retirement system increases in the Bow School District budget. The budget that we are presenting in Article 1 is $8,571,662. This number includes salary, building maintenance and upkeep, furniture replacements, educational supplies, transportation, food service, and so on. Overall, this budget represents an increase of approximately 6.98% over last year's budget, or a dollar amount of $559,317. Again, the biggest drivers of this increase are health insurance, retirement system increases, and tuition. In our regular education line, that's line 1100 at the top of our summary sheet, uh, the increase of $510,351 includes the following changes. There was an increase of uh, almost $47,000 for salaries and wages, which covers step and track increases for our staff and a 3% increase to the grid for all staff. There was a decrease in Bow Memorial School's estimated tuition rate for our 7th and 8th grade students of $43 to $12,106 per student. We budgeted 77 students for these two grades, which includes two extra seats should we have students move in during the year. This is a decrease to four students over current enrollment, and overall this line for the middle school decreased by $51,907. However, there was an increase in Bow High School's estimated tuition rate of $1,003 up to $16,273 per student per year. We budgeted 150 students, which includes four extra seats should we have students move in during the year. This is an increase of 16 students over current enrollment, resulting in an increase of $397,970 overall for high school tuition. So between the middle and the high school, we have a, a pretty large increase in tuition. Uh, another large driver of the budget increases benefit, which is particularly the health insurance and retirement that I mentioned. Our regular education benefits lines went up $105,022.
64,000 of that increase is due to health insurance premium increases and 38,000 due to increase in retirement obligation. The next line, line 1200 on the summary sheet, the special education section, has dropped $33,243. That's kind of rare to have our lead budget go down. Uh, there was a decrease in costs for tuition, for contracted services, and contracted aid, totaling $94,000, and a $54,000 increase in sped employee costs, mostly attributed to health insurance and retirement. The next lines are bilingual, co-curricular, enrichment programs, essentially remain steady. In our pupil support section of the budget, on your summary sheet, we have an overall increase of $44,286. This includes modest increases in wages and equipment for guidance, psychological, and speech services. We added five days to the school nurse work year which resulted in an increase in that line of $4,553. Employee benefits are again, the biggest driver in this area of the budget for guidance, health, and speech. Physical therapy and occupational therapy, uh, PT decreased nominally, while OT increased by $9,780, primarily due to an out of district placement needing OT services, and those services were included in the tuition agreement. And there's also, of course, an increase in employee benefits for our Dunbarton Elementary School occupational therapist. Our instructional support lines, lines 2212 through 2250 on the summary sheet, increased $11,464, with the increases occurring in our technology services line, specifically about $2,700 for technology data services, which includes Microsoft Firewall Management, cybersecurity, Google G Suite, and several other similar services. And $8,400 for technology data management, which includes programs like Infinite Canvas, Parent Square, and iReady. The general administration portion of the budget, that's lines 2311 through 2321 on the summary sheet, increased $10,676 due to an increase in the overall SEU services budget, as well as Dunbarton's share of the assessment percentage, which grew at a faster rate than both. The SAU uh, budget is divided between the two districts, 50% based on the, uh, uh, the town's equalized property valuation and 50% by the town's um, average daily membership. Uh, Bose average is more than Dunbarton by a very little bit, but Dunbarton's property value has gone up a little bit more than Bose recently. So our share of the assessment has gone up uh, at a higher rate. School administration covering the office of the principal and principal's clerical staff increased by $13,676 due to increases in both wages and benefits. The facilities portion of the budget line 2620, increased by $5,676 due to wage and benefit increases. Fortunately, our projected propane cost dropped by about $2,900. The transportation line, 2721 through 2724, increased significantly. Transportation is a contracted service, and lately busing companies have had a hard time finding and keeping drivers. The regular transportation buses increased $8,883 due to a 3% increase in our annual contract. The special education transportation line is projected to increase $4,884. And this line includes sped busing to the schools, to an out of district placement, and for the extended school year program in the summer. All of our transportation is a contracted service. Food service, line 3120, increased by $1,115 due to wages and benefits and food costs. There's nothing in the building improvement line, line 4500. Uh, and we see a decrease in the debt service line, line 5100, of $8,160, which is in line with our bond payment schedule and correlates to our capital reserve contribution in warrant article two, which we'll discuss shortly. So in summary, the budget are as follows. 
Wages, $103,782. Health insurance, $127,129. Retirement, $62,884. Grades 7 through 12 tuition, $346,063 for a total $639,858 for those items. Now, the rest of our budget lines, there's an expenditure decrease of about $72,000 to get us to the total for our operating budget. Um, I'm going to move right along about the revenue side. Um, this uh, is seen every year. Hopefully, uh, you folks are familiar with it. In the top section is um, we review what our uh, projected expenditures are going to be by warrant article. Um, the first column uh, uh, is the finalized 2020-21 budget for this current fiscal year that we're in right now. And then we have our proposed numbers for next year. We have the dollar difference, the percentage change, and then the tax rate change generated by those dollar differences. So starting right off with the operating budget that warrant article one, you can see the numbers that we had for last year, 8 million, 12,000 and some change. This year, 8 million, 571,000. The dollar difference, $559,317. There's that 6.9% increase I spoke about. And that would be reflected as a dollar 42 increase in uh, our current tax rate. Uh, the next, Article number two that we'll have on our warrant is for capital reserve fund deposit. Last year was 11,405. This year, 19,565. And I'll talk about that uh, in a moment. Difference of $8,160. The third warrant article we're proposing this year is the same as last year and uh, every year for as long as I can remember. It's a thousand dollars that gets deposited into the community center equipment fund. And that thousand dollars is funded by the town, and we need a warrant article for uh, the school district to deposit that. So the next section in this sheet is the capital budget, and uh, ever since we started uh, uh, planning for our recent um, building addition and renovation project, we've talked about the need to um, level out our capital reserve. Excuse me, our capital budget every year. It uh, varied quite a bit year to year based on capital needs. Uh, so now what we're talking about is trying to keep our capital budget at $240,000 every year. Uh, and we've been doing that since we began that uh, improvement project back in 2018, I believe it was. So uh, the capital budget includes any bond payments, any deposits into the capital reserve fund, and any capital expenses for particular projects. Last year, a bond payment was 228,000, and we took the difference to 1,405 and deposited that into capital reserve for a total capital budget of 240,000. This year, we're proposing the same thing. As our bond payments decrease, the uh, amount being deposited into the capital reserve fund will increase. Can you drop down? Yep. Uh, one more. There we go. Um, so that we maintain a level of $40,000. And uh, this bar chart shows where we are in fiscal year 2022. And the yellow amount are the uh, principal and interest payments on bond. The blue amounts are the capital reserve fund deposits. And you can see there'll be uh, the total amount will stay at 240000 at least for the next couple of years. Once we get out of 2023, uh, we're going to take another look to the future, uh, perhaps bring in our, um, our consultant to do another assessment of our capital needs, and at that point decide whether we stay at 240000 or perhaps can drop down as shown on this plan, on this uh, bar chart. So that's our capital budget. Um, then uh, back to the uh, prior page, please. More first page of the there. article. Yeah. Nope, nope. Uh, we're still in the revenue right there. There we go. 
The next section in this sheet is revenues and credits. Uh, the amounts are remain pretty much the same down through here. Uh, miscellaneous revenue is the rental income we receive from the after school program. We do receive some Medicaid uh, money from the federal government for uh, applicable services and expenses. Uh, our state special education aid we're projecting to be level, although that can change from year to year. Uh, our state child nutrition and federal child nutrition uh, monies we're projecting to remain about constant. Food service sales, we're projecting a very slight increase uh, in that. Capital reserve withdrawal, we are not proposing to withdraw any money from capital reserve, so that's zero. And then warrant articles funded by the fund balance, there's that thousand dollars for that warrant article number three. The prior year fund balance to reduce taxes, that is always a, a line that is of great interest every year. It's usually uh, significant enough to have a major impact on what we project our uh, tax rate increase to be. Last year, uh, at the end of the year, when we closed the books, there was $218,558 left uh, for fiscal year 2020 and 21. That money automatically is considered as revenue uh, for the upcoming year. So during this current fiscal year, um, that was considered revenue when the tax rate was set back in October. It's interesting to note that last March at our district meeting, we projected that number to be only 116,000. But by the time we got to the end of the year, we had additional revenues, uh, some from the state and lesser expenses, uh, so that the actual prior year fund balance is quite a bit higher. For this current fiscal year, we're projecting uh, when we get to the end of June to have a fund balance of about 365,000. Again, we're watching the expenditure side, we're receiving additional revenues from the state to cover um, COVID related expenses and so forth. And right now our projection is that that amount is gonna go up. That's a good thing. That money will be used to offset tax rate next October. But again, that's just a projection at the moment. A lot can happen between now and June. Uh, things can go up, expenses can go up, revenues can go down, uh, but that is our, our best guess at this moment. So looking at our total revenues and credits, which uh, are used to offset our expenditures, we're looking at an increase in revenue of about $157,000, um, which would uh, correlate 40 cent drop in the tax rate. Then we get down to the next section, which is our adequacy aid from the state. And adequacy aid includes the state education grant plus the state school tax that's raised right here in the community. Uh, the adequacy aid uh, includes an amount of about just under $3,800 per, um, per student for base aid. And then there's some differentiated aid for uh, students that uh, qualify for free and reduced price lunch, qualify for um, an IEP, um, any students in third grade who are not reading at a proficient level or above, there's some additional money for that. Uh, English, English language learners, there's some additional aid for that of which we don't have any. Um, so there's some, uh, the differential aid gets added in there as well to the base aid uh, per student. And um, of that total amount, uh, a certain amount of it is raised right here in the community through the state school tax. The state school tax is based on uh, the state raising $363 million statewide based on equalized property values across the state and then adjusted for the actual property values in your community. Um, so because our property values are going up here in Dunbarton, the amount of the total adequacy A that we need to or we will raise through the statewide school uh, statewide education property tax is going up about 32,000. But if you notice right above that, the state education grant, which is the difference between the swept amount and the total adequacy aid, that's going down quite a bit, $247,000. And that's because last year, uh, the state also uh, had fiscal disparity aid, which uh, the state uh, attempted to allocate money or did allocate money to uh, towns that had uh, lower property values per student. They tried to target money to those towns 
And believe it or not, Dunbarton qualified for some of that aid in the amount of $242,000. Um, there is no aid currently this year. However, the, the legislature is still in session. There's a lot of discussion about what kind of additional aid, if any, the state may come up with this year and whether that would be applicable for this upcoming fiscal year. So that could change between now and when the legislature retires at the end of June. Uh, but for now, we're projecting that there'll be a decrease in that line and a corresponding of course, increase in our taxes to cover the difference. So the total local school taxes to be raised last year was 5,508,000. Next year, we're projecting to be 6,133,000, a difference of 624,000. 624, 11.34%, $1.58 increase on the tax rate. We sum everything up as far as the tax rate calculation in the next section down. Uh, we have our assessed property value. By the way, that went up significantly with the revaluation we had. Last year's assessed property value was about 315 million. We're now up to 394 million. Um, the other uh, item line to note is that the amount to raise $100,000 in this town has now gone down. It's only uh, about 25 cents, 25.4 cents on our tax rate will raise $100,000. So they did the bottom three lines it compares last year's tax rate with what we're projecting for this year. The school, the local school rate, 1555, the school tax rate of $1.97, and the total school rate of $17.52, which we're projecting to be $1.67 above last year's rate or 10.54%. Um, again, these increases are driven by those drivers we talked about in our budget. Um, as well as the potential reduction that we're anticipating in our state aid. Um, that's that's it. it for the presentation. For one. Should we accept comments? Uh, I think we should at this point. Clem, are you still there? Or, or Jeff, you're running the show from here? Yeah, I'll take the your computer. Yeah, so um, let's move into some public comment. The way I think that we should go about doing this is if you'd like to make a comment, please raise your hand and we'll get you in so that you can make that comment. Clarify, Jeff, that there's a raise hand button on your screen for the Google Meet, if that's what you mean. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Clem. Um, Jeff, can you quit sharing your screen? I'm sorry? Can you quit sharing your screen? Stop sharing. I'm over sharing. Did it work? Yeah. All right. Sharon, go ahead. You can unmute. This is uh, Mike Kulinski. Um, at year end, you projected a, a probably a, a surplus of 365K and that's an increase of 157k is that considered conservative liberal or i think is um is that a guaranteed amount you're going to be able to apply towards taxes or apply towards the next year's this year's budget surplus going to be applied towards this year's budget or next year 165k surplus Could somebody uh paraphrase comment question yeah. you've heard i can't hear it i can't hear it what that is. Sure a way hey, Mike, can you ask again? You yes. said one. You, you said what? Yes. Um, 365 would be turned over into the new budget. Yes, Should I try again? Yes, and the thing is, we projected a uh, an increase of 157k over last year. How confident is that number, or is it a variable? Increase of 170,000 dollars last year. How confident are you in the variable? You're asking about the year-end fund balance, right? Correct. Year-end fund balance. Okay, our. Um, Mike, can you hear me? Okay. 
Um, the year-end year -end balance is projecting 365,000. That's what you're talking about. Um, how confident are we? Well, I'm going to look at our business administrator who gave us the number. It is uh, overly conservative, nor is it overly optimistic. So I would say we're as confident as we could be, but we do have to caution folks that things can change between now and June. We could have uh, students with certain uh, needs that, that move into the town that we have to address, or we could have other expenditures we're not anticipating. We also could get additional revenue coming in that could increase that projected uh, fund balance, but it's the best number we can come up with at this moment. He thank said, you. thank you, Jeff. And uh, I think the, uh, the other question was, can that be applied to next year's taxes? And by state law, it will be applied to next year's taxes. Uh, the school district is not allowed to carry money forward from year to year. Any money that's left over at the end of the year gets applied, that is not encumbered, uh, gets a, uh, considered as revenue in October when the tax rate is set. So this amount will be, uh, any amount that we have left over will be applied to reduce the tax rate next October. Thank you. I can, I can hear it. Okay. Um, we're going to move on to warrant article number two. So warrant article number two, excuse me, warrant article number two, see if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $19,565 to be added to the existing Dunbarton School Capital Reserve Fund. Uh, established in March 1991. Said amount is to come from general taxation. Uh, and as I mentioned during our presentation, um, this amount is uh, when you add it to our project or add it to our bond payment for next year equals our capital budget. And our total capital budget, we're looking to keep it uniform at $240,000 a year. Uh, so by, by our bond payment decreasing, we're going to increase our deposit into capital reserve and, uh, and I think our bar chart showed that, and that's, uh, that's in our package, which uh, I think is available online. Uh, any questions on our capital reserve fund deposit article? Okay, that was pretty simple. Uh, the last article, uh, Nicole, were you gonna present on this one? No, okay. <laughs> uh, the last article, uh, we have this every year. See if the school district will vote to raise and appropriate up to $1,000 for deposit into the existing Dunbarton Community Center Capital Reserve Fund established in March 2008 and to authorize the use of that amount from the June 30th, 2021 unreserved fund balance surplus available for transfer on July 1st, 2021. Um, each year, uh, the town, uh, uh, gives us $1,000 to put into this fund. Uh, the fund accumulates over time, and when there are uh, certain purchases that needed that are needed for the community center or the kitchen, uh, then we take half of the amount from that fund and half the amount the school district pays right out of their operating budget. So it's a way for the town and the school to contribute to uh, repairs and improvements to what is really considered to be a joint facility, which is the community center and the kitchen. Any questions on Article 3? Yes. That's a very good question. A question from the floor was, what is the balance in our fund at this point? And our business administrator is tapping on his keyboard and will yell out a number in a moment. The amount is $3,229. Okay. 
Okay, uh, if there's nothing else, Clem, did you want to close the public hearing? Uh, yes, thank you, Jeff Trexler, for carrying the uh, lion's share of that work tonight. Um, no more questions. We are going to close the budget hearing and open up our regular school board meeting. Of course, all of you are welcome to stay. Jeff Moody, do you want to take that away? Uh, Clem, we have a hand raised. Okay. Uh, Mike, go ahead. I just want to say, uh, technologically, the uh, this meeting was a B plus. I give thumbs up to the uh, to the tech guys doing the technical work behind the scene. Um, everything was well communicated. Thank you for making this possible. Thanks, uh, we would man. like to uh, uh, you know thank our board member Jeff Moody for setting all this stuff up for us, and we appreciate uh, your comments. Thank you. And we will definitely try to iron all this out so that when we have our town meeting and our district meeting, and we have, if we need overflow, it'll be running simultaneously in the library and other classrooms so people can be in person and all that. But yeah, the sound wasn't the best. And Jeff Moody's saying it's gonna be an A plus next meeting, yeah. which is good. <laughs> okay, thank you. So any other stuff or we, uh, Ready to adjourn? Do we need to, a roll call vote to adjourn or can we just adjourn it? Roll call vote. Yes. All right. Did who made the motion to adjourn? Yep. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Move. Do I have a second? Jeff Trexler seconds. Uh, we could do a roll call vote for adjourn. Jared Duncan. Yes. Nicole Sloan. Jeff Trexler. Yes. And Chair Clem Madden. Yes. This meeting is adjourned. At, at this point, I'm going to stop recording the meeting. Uh, so the Google Meet will stay on for the school board meeting. But I'm going to stop recording because we're only going to record the budget hearing, right? Right. Okay. Go upstairs or stay here? I'd like to go upstairs for Let's comfortable. Go upstairs, yeah. But James wants to put the chairs away. The are, you, are you guys migrating to the library? Yes. So it'll be what, a five minute break? Yeah, five minute break. I'll close down and reopen when we get up there. Okay. Everyone hear that? That's on the meeting. Five minute break. If you want to hang out for the school board meeting, please do. But it's going offline for a bit. Thank you, Jeff Moody.